Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 110. If you want to download this workbook for chapter 11, click on the link directly below the video and scroll all the way down to the Finance Excel class section. Hey, this is our last video for this class here, and uh, maybe we save the best for last. Let's go over to our PowerPoints, which can also be downloaded. Last video we talked about portfolio beta, and the video before that we talked about the reward to risk ratio. And we talked about how we take the R expected returns for a particular asset minus the risk free and divide it by the beta. That gives us the return per one unit of systematic risk, since systematic risk is the only uh, risk that's rewarded in the financial markets. Uh, that This number then can be compared to the market risk premium. Ah, but we want to take this one step further, and we kind of did hint at this two videos ago. In a well-functioning competitive market, prices tend to converge. And what that means is, here's our formula we've been using for the beta for the asset. But what's this? This is the actual same ratio, but for the market. And beta of the market's 1. So really, um, uh, all the prices, if it's competitive, people are bidding up and down, up and down. They all tend to converge on one single line called the security market line with the same uh, reward for one unit of systematic risk. Now, that doesn't mean everyone gets exactly one unit because some companies are two. It just means this is reduced down to this right here because this is always one. So then we can take, in essence, this uh, reward here, multiply it times the beta, and get the return that we should expect. Now let's look at a graph of this. Here it is. Security market line starts at risk-free. And at any particular point on here, the slope is always going to be the same. It's the return on the market minus the risk-free. And again, this is for well-functioning you know, financial markets like the New York Stock Exchange. But at this point right here, this is beta equals 1. We already saw that there's some betas less than 1, some greater than 1. There's even some that are negative. But right here, that equals exactly the uh, expected return on the market. Now, if we go way up here to 2, we would just take the slope, multiply by 2, and that would be the return that we would expect for an asset with a beta of 1. Now. Let's take this right here, and if we transform it, we're going to get something called the capital asset pricing model. All right, so here's our uh, equation set up here. We simply saw, we get rid of beta, we multiply both sides, we're left with this. We have uh, the uh, minus risk free over here, so we simply add it to here, and lo and behold, the capital asset price at mo model gives us a model that we can use to figure out what the expected return for an asset at a given rate r level of beta, which is our systematic risk, should be. We look at it in the market, we get this number right here. We look at uh, some proxy for risk free, plug that in there, and all we need is our beta. And we saw that we can calculate that based on past data. Uh, let's go, we're going to do a calculation over in Excel. Here's the capital asset pricing model. Uh, SML and Cap M tell us the minimum return we should expect at a given systematic risk level. Again, we just plug that beta in, uh, and hopefully we can get reliable information for these inputs from the markets. Let's look at a chart down here. Here's the SLM slope if the market rate was 9%. So the slope is going to be 9% market risk premium for one beta, meaning the market uh, it has a beta of 1. So the going rate, this will, this will give us the going rate. The risk free is 2%. And in our, our example over in Excel, we'll do this. But what's going to happen is we have this, this line here. And all uh, assets trading in this well-functioning uh, market where information is assimilated quickly into prices. Everything should price along here. If there's anything above or below, it, it shouldn't last for too long. Now, here's the deal. Now, this is a plot from directly, well, let's look at this first. Here's the market one. And I did the calculation right here. 2% plus 9% equals 11%. So if you have a beta of one, you should expect to get a return of 11%. 
Now beta of 2, we say the risk-free 2% uh, plus 9% times 2, so we'd get a return of 20. So at beta 2, the security market line will tell you that uh, the expected return should be 20%. Now, if we plot and something's above, now look at this line, we we'll go like this and over. Notice that the rate is higher than the line. So when there's a higher rate, that is the discount rate in essence, and that means that the stock is undervalued. Higher rate, lower price. So it's going to be undervalued in relation to this line. If it's underneath, it's going to be exactly the opposite, overvalued. Let's go over and make a calculation. And guess what? Last uh, two videos ago, we did the reward to risk ratio. We did the same exact example here, but now we're just going to use the cap M. When we did the risk to reward ratio, we compared the risk reward ratio directly to the market risk premium, right? Now with cap M, we're going to do something slightly different. We're going to calculate the um, expected return for this particular asset using cap M, and then we're going to compare it to this right here. All right, so let's calculate this. Equals, we got our risk free, so I'm going to click that, and then plus the risk premium on the market times the beta. Now, right here, we've already calculated this right here. So I'm simply going to take this 9, and then times, that's the market risk premium, times the beta, right? So it's going to give the this little bit right here is going to be 1 times that plus 0.2 extra because this is this stock A is a little bit risky a little bit more systematic risk uh, than the average asset in the market. And boom, what do we get? 12.8. So, this return using the market inputs, and you can see those are the market inputs and the beta, which is from past data. It should be 12.8, but our estimate is 12.5. No way are we going to buy this asset. Notice that we came to the same conclusion when we used our, our risk-reward ratio. It's just that we calculated this reward-to-risk ratio and compared it directly to the market risk. Over, But we still said, no way. Here, we're calculating using market data. This estimated that it's only 12.5, so no way are we going to buy. Over here, we're going to do the same calculation, risk-free, plus, and using the market information, That's this is the premium on the market. Out in the market, we're seeing that times the beta of 0 0.6. So the return should be 7.4. So the market says it should be giving everyone 7.4, but our calculations say 9. Then we are definitely going to buy this. All right, now let's look over at our chart. We've estimated 9. If we look at this plot up here, the market line says it's 7.4. We think it's going to give us more return than the market does. That means it's a good buy. That means we think the stock is undervalued. The opposite is true for this other one. This is the plot, although it's pretty close to the line, it's hard to see. The uh, market return for beta, according to the systematic risk, should be 12.8. We've calculated. Uh, 12.5, so no way. This is less than this one. That means we are not going to buy. It's overvalued. That means it's underneath. So 12.5 is what we've estimated. If you move it up a little bit on the line, that would be that 12.8, right? And so that one is overvalued. All right, that's it for Chapter 11, and that's it for this Finance and Excel series. We'll see you next series.